I'm Kimberly Wallace Sanders. I'm an Associate Professor of American Studies and African American Studies at Emory University. And I curated this exhibit that's called Framing Shadows. I've been doing research, uh, scholarship on the stereotype of African American women taking care of white children, typically called the mammy figure, sometimes called uh, black nannies or African American nannies. I've been doing that work for probably 20 years now. Um, and at some point after finishing my last book, I began to look at the portraits of women who were holding the children. So my earlier work was about the representation of African American women holding white children in popular culture and in literature. And the more I looked at those portraits, the more I began to think, this is data in some ways. These are some really interesting stories here in these portraits that, uh, it's, that we don't see represented in Southern plantation novels, for example. And once I began to look at a few, I was really astounded by how many there were. I think what's unique about them is it's very easy to assume that there aren't any photographs of African Americans from the early to mid 19th century, and there are. There are many photographs of African Americans in uh, caretaking positions. And so there's something really unique about these portraits in that they introduce a whole new line of evidence and um, history and historical culture to us that um, I know I hadn't thought of before. And I feel like it adds a new layer to how we think about race in this culture, how we think about labor, how we think about child care, how we think about family relations, and the way that photography moves in in terms of technology to uh, capture one particular moment in time that the more you look at it, the more you see, the more is revealed. One of the reasons I titled it Framing Shadows is that in the past I've written that the black mammy stereotype is so um, large it's such an overwhelming and overpowering stereotype that the actual African-American women who served in this role sort of are obscured in a shadow of this sort of towering stereotype. And so I think of these women as living in the shadow of that stereotype. I also called it framing shadows because I want us to think about all the things that are uh, removed from the center of a photograph what uh, disappears off into the shadows, and the same way that I think of these women disappearing into obscurity and history. We don't know their names, we don't know their ages, but to think about them brings them to life to us, and it honors their memory, and it honors the kind of work that they did, and we add value to their humanity in that way, and it's a way that we are framing something that would have been lost into the shadows. I have to say that when the Langmuir Collection came into the library, that was really one of the most exciting moments for me as an Emory University faculty member and as a researcher, because I knew when that collection came in that it was a game changer. When I looked uh, at the display, I thought, there were a hundred books that I could write just based on these photographs. There were such um, unique portraits in there. By the time the Langmuir came to Emory, I had done uh, a great deal of primary research at other uh, collections, at other archives, and so I was able to really see what was unique about the Robert Langmuir collection. I could tell what portraits I'd never seen before. I could tell that there were companion nanny portraits um, in this collection that I hadn't seen anyplace else and that you won't see anyplace else. I could tell that there were uh, portraits of African American men in in the role of domestic servant that you don't see in other archives or other collections. And one of the things that was really exciting is that when that collection came in, Robert Langmuir put a catalog together and he actually dedicated it to the woman who uh, took care of him growing up, who was the domestic servant in his family. And I thought that's an amazing tie for me as a researcher, for him to put a catalog together and dedicate it to her. Uh, I'd never been to another collection, for example, where there was an actual box full of, uh, that was already cataloged called African American Nannies. Normally, I have to uh, go through a collection or go through archives. I have to have some information, or uh, I really, it's a needle in a haystack. I really have to be digging. But the fact that Robert Langmuir um, separated those photographs uh, and cataloged them in that way was very exciting for me and really uh, said something to me about what kind of collector he is.
So this is one of the most unique portraits in the Langmuir collection. On the back of this portrait, um, it's written in pencil, two black hands. And there was some discussion, actually, I considered using this as uh, the primary portrait for publicity and um, promotion materials for this exhibit. One of the things that I see when I look at this portrait is uh, this kind of disembodied uh, state that happens for black women who are taking care of white children, almost as if they don't matter in any real way, that all that matters is that they're, they're holding up uh, the sort of treasure of this white child, who quite frankly in this portrait looks a little scared. But I decided against using this because I really wanted the viewer to focus on the humanity of the African American subjects in the portraits. And I think this is one that is so disturbing and also so compelling. I've never seen a portrait like this um, in many, many years of looking at portraits of African American women uh, holding white children. Some of the questions I would really like for people to ask as they look at the photographs um, is I want them to say, what do I see? And then to look again, say, what do I see now? What might I be missing? What do I see in her facial expression, the facial expression of the African-American subject? Do they look happy? Do they look sad? Do they look tired? Um, what kind of connection can you see in the pose? What do you notice about the clothes? What do you think the clothes might tell you about um, the role? Uh, is she wearing a uniform? Is she dressed in her own clothes? Are the clothes very formal so that they might, be, might have been picked out just for this particular portrait? What can you tell about the setting? Is it a formal studio portrait? So that means that there's some uh, imposition on behalf of the photographer. I chose this as the title image for Framing Shadows because I love the way that the light plays on this African-American woman's face. The fact that the child is in her lap and the child is leaning on her is interesting because I think at first take, this is a good example of uh, a portrait where someone might say, oh, there's a lot of affection between uh, the African-American woman and the white child. And you can tell certainly that that child is leaning on her, but if you look at her posture, she's not holding the child at all. She's holding herself upright, um, and those are the things that I notice. There's handwriting on the back of this portrait reads, Elizabeth's mammy with a friend. Elizabeth didn't like this. One of the things that stands out to me immediately is that the African-American woman is only called a mammy here. Elizabeth isn't even in this portrait, and her name is mentioned twice. So the idea that uh, this is a portrait made of Elizabeth's mammy holding Elizabeth's friend really gives you some sense of how distant the African-American women are from uh, being the primary subjects of these portraits. And that's why I think an exhibit like this is really important, is because we move them into the foreground. We move them into the center of the conversation in a way that um, hasn't happened before. So I think I would really like for people to look at these photographs deeply and think not just about their own relationship to this relationship, sort of, you know, where do I stand in relationship to African American women taking care of white children, but what am I learning about American history and American culture and about labor history and about childcare from looking at this photograph? What am I learning about photography from looking at this? What is it that makes the Langmuir collection unique so that I would like to come back and see what else they have? One of the things I really wanted to do was to use the fact that the exhibit was going to be in the rotunda, uh, which is a circular space, and I wanted to think of this exhibit as uh, an opportunity to give people uh, a chance to think about this particular relationship from all different perspectives. So the narrative that we're most familiar with is the narrative of white Southerners who talk about this relationship from their point of view. Either they employed this woman or they were raised by an African-American nanny. A 360 degree approach um, in this exhibit is a way to get the viewer to think about all the other perspectives. For example, what is the perspective of the African-American woman's child who's being left uh, probably taken care of by somebody else so that she can take care of somebody else's child.
what is the perspective of the African-American child who someone else has to take care of so that her mother, his or her mother, can take care of this white child? What's the perspective of the white mother uh, whose child is developing a very close relationship with this woman? What's the perspective of the African-American woman herself who's away from her children, away from her family, developing a close relationship with this child, but also uh, often told that uh, the child is superior to her? How can thinking about the narrative, the counter-narratives, all of these different perspectives, how can this really give us a better understanding of this relationship? So part of the 360 degree approach um, is not just in the rotunda, but it's also in the materials that we selected for the corridor. And that's really important. I really want people to look at those texts and think of them in conversation with one another and to think about the perspective that the text is representing. So for example, uh, something like Uncle Tom's Cabin, which is an abolitionist text, represents the black mammy in a particular kind of way, represents African American women with white children from an abolitionist point of view. And then there's a response from a pro-slavery point of view that uses the very same character. And so that's a different perspective, that the very same character um, and characterization of black women with white children was used by an abolitionist author and also used by a pro-slavery author. I think uh, the other thing I want people to see in the text in the corridor and also in the additional portraits and photographs that's there is um, I want people to think about the way that authors represent this relationship in their own writing. So for example, the text like One of the Family, the author writes about the um, African-American domestic servant from her point of view, what her life is like, uh, her thoughts, her inner life, and the conversations that she wishes she could have with uh, her white employer about the child that she's taking care of. You also get the perspective in South to a Very Old Place, where the author, Albert Murray, talks about his grandmother taking care of white children and what she told him about those children and how he integrated that information into his thinking about race and race relations growing up. Um, I think the other thing that happens in the corridor is that it's a way for people to walk up and down that hallway and think, I never thought about that, or I never thought about that perspective, or this is an author I'm not familiar with and I really would like to read something more. I think the other thing I really want people to think about in the corridor is an African American response to that particular stereotype and to think that there are lots of different ways of thinking about this and we're accustomed to thinking, we're often accustomed to thinking about it in a very superficial way and I'm always looking for complexity and depth and so uh, with the text and the photographs that are in the hallway, it's an opportunity for the viewer to really uh, see how multi-layered this relationship is um, and to I think go back and look at the portraits again. For the most part, these women or, or young girls uh, would not have been paid, but they would have been given room and board for taking care of a white child. And any time we tie affection to any kind of reimbursement, that is more complex than we typically think of. We have a tendency to glamorize or romanticize that relationship and think that it is represented as one that's so much full of affection and devotion. That's a very superficial reading. I think a deeper reading is, what's actually happening there? This is a woman who's away from her family, taking care of a child. A bond is happening through a long-term relationship. But they also know that they're different. The child knows that the African-American woman taking care of him or her is a different race than they are. They know that there are different class things. And those things happen gradually. That's not something a baby knows. That's not something a toddler knows. But that's something a child learns over time. And so there's a socialization that happens where children learn about who is a servant. What is a servant's role in their household? So someone that they might have very close affectionate uh, ties to, they watch the way their family responds to this woman. They watch the way their family, the way their parents talk about her 
when she's not there or talk to her when she is there. So all of those complexities are playing into this particular interracial relationship. It's also intergenerational because many of these young women took care of these children until the children were old enough to go off and have families of their own. So they're in service to a family for 20 years often or 30 years. Sometimes the same woman took care of that child's child, right? So it's a generational, an intergenerational uh, relationship that happens in a family. I think there's also a complex relationship between the mother, the biological mother, and the woman who's doing the caretaking, who's taking care of the child and has this long-term um, affectionate relationship. Those bonds are troubling and complex. I want to challenge that particular Gone with the Wind narrative, the relationship between Mammy and Scarlett, and ask more troubling questions. Where is there some sense that uh, this woman is away from her own children and might build up some resentment towards the family that she's working for? Where is some sense that, um, you know, she's not being paid and she's working long hours from really sun up to sundown. You know, you often, these women often uh, stayed in the same room with the children so that they could be on hand to take care of them all day and all night. What was that like to be so exhausted? And so one of the portraits I really want people to pay attention to is one where the African-American woman has actually fallen asleep while she's sitting for this pose. And you can see that her arms are relaxed. And the photographer or the family put this baby on her lap while she was asleep. And that portrait is so profound for me because it's a way of reminding us of the labor that's involved in taking care of children. She is tired, and that's really something for us to remember, that it is tiring work taking care of children. There's another portrait where the African-American um, uh, woman is pregnant, and she's holding a child that she takes care of. And that, the immediacy of that moment, she's wearing... Um, an apron, and so you know that she's the nanny, you know that she's the domestic servant, and you can tell that she's pregnant. And in that moment, she's looking at the child that she's taking care of, and you have to think, what's going to happen to her baby when that baby is born? How is she going to manage this? Is somebody else going to help her out? How will this work, and what is her life going to be like? And she's smiling in this portrait, and I look at that portrait a lot, and I think she's there's a lot of depth to that smile. She really might be smiling at the child, but she also might be smiling with pleasure in her own pregnancy. And that leads us into thinking of the inner lives of these women in a way that I don't think we think of very often.